Today I'm going to share with you our Greek Cypriot wedding traditions and that's apart from drinking and a breaking plates. Cheers! Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm Andre. Welcome to a wee chit chat video. This is one of those videos where you can just put your earphones on, get on with whatever you've got to do whilst I tell you all about our Greek Cypriot wedding traditions. But before we get into all of that, I would love for you to subscribe if you haven't already. A thumbs up is always very much appreciated. And whilst you're doing all of that, you can uh, ding -a my bell, which will remind you every time I upload a video. I upload a variety of videos. I mainly do vlogs. But I do lots of handbag videos and I do chit chat videos, get ready with me and I, I basically do a mishmash of everything. Right, should we get started? Now where should we start? So, this video came about because I recently uploaded my goddaughter's wedding. So we travelled to Cyprus and um, our whole family travelled because Maria decided that she wanted to get married in Cyprus and she wanted to hold on to some of the traditions not all of them but some of them so when I uploaded that video I had quite a few of you message me to ask what the traditions meant so I'm going to touch on the traditions that you will have seen in the wedding I will link the wedding in my description box just in case you haven't seen it and you can see the traditions actually happening during the wedding. So Maria got married um, at the beach and the actual ceremony was not a Greek Cypriot ceremony. The actual, because we have like the exchanging of the crowns, the Stefana, when we get married and different things and it wasn't in a church. So that was different. But the stories, man, the dressing of the bride that happens and the dressing of the groom and all of that, Maria, well, Maria stuck to it. We did it with for Maria because that's what Maria wanted. Obviously, Dane, her now husband, is Scottish. So I don't know what went on in their house because we were with Maria. So obviously they didn't do the stories and all that because it's not their tradition to do. But we did the traditions as Maria wanted. So before I get onto the traditions, I just want to say it was an amazing wedding. It was a very emotional wedding. Um, Rico actually touched on, so Rico gave Maria away. My husband gave Maria away because we're Maria's godparents. Like I said, she's our goddaughter. So he kind of touched on some of the meaning of the pre-wedding party, the stories, man. But he didn't get obviously into the details. He was just doing, basically, he was standing in for the father of the bride speech because he gave it away and kind of touched on that. So I'm going to explain it thoroughly for you, okay? So yes, I was saying it was a very emotional wedding. I... I was very emotional as soon as I saw Maria as a bride and um, you know the feelings of how proud her dad would have been. Maria lost her dad in 2019 and suddenly uh, but you'll know all of that if you watch the wedding and you watch Rico's speech which was oh my goodness um, so you know all those thoughts come into mind and I just kept thinking, my goodness, he would have been so, so proud. Gula did her proud. I mean, stood there at this point as a single parent and just, she was amazing and she's been so strong along the journey. But I'll let you watch the wedding because if you haven't, because Rico explains all of that, what they've had to go through in his speech. So I've made notes. I'm going to keep looking down because I don't want to forget anything because it's very important not to forget anything. So the Greek Cypriot traditions consist of wrapping red scarves around the couple, which is the Zonisma. We have in the groom's house, so the bride's in, in her parents' house and the groom's in his parents' house. And normally it's the shaving of the groom and again dressing of the groom and anything that happens with the bride happens with the groom except for the shaving. <laughs> well, 
you know we don't know what happens but you know we don't shave the bride <laughs> in the actual wedding ceremony like i said we have the stefana i'll show you mine i'll get mine down and i'll show you mine to let you see what stefana are so here are my stefana sorry for the reflection these are when i say mine our crowns there we go and you'll see that they are joined by a ribbon and on the attachment as they're attached as the ribbon is attached to the crowns you see there's a bit of olive leaf and the red ribbon again red is a very significant color in the customs of the greek cypriot weddings this here is the, my sash my zoni that my mum used for me when she did the zonisma and that's basically me and rico on either side i didn't want to take them off the wall because you're not really supposed to move your stefana around about it makes your marriage rocky although after 40 years i think we're okay <laughs> So that's what my mum used to say to me do not move your stefana about do not move them they're supposed to be sitting above your bed but i've recently moved them and moved them in here so i can look at them <laughs> i've got a nice picture frame above my bed now i think i had them many many years sitting above my bed haven't moved them that often could probably count on one hand the times that i have moved them okay where were we so the crowning of the couple the stefana exchanging of the wedding rings now this is done very differently in our church when I got married, we had anybody could sign to be a best man. You have your best man, your best woman, and then from all, from all the people that you invite, they can decide if they want to be a best man and a best woman. They sign their name on the ribbon that's attached to the Stefana, so it goes along all of them, and um, they pay to become a best man. So all of this was geared to help the couple you know so you know you you put money on the bubloma which i'll explain you put money you know when you become a best man and all of that and they would all every single one of those people that have become you could have 30 best men and 30 best women and they would all exchange your ring so it wasn't just your maid of honor and your best man all of those people that kind of signed on that ribbon and paid to be a best man would exchange your rings this is what used to happen when i got married i don't know if it still it still happens they've changed a lot of the customs now okay the inscribing of the soles of the bride's shoe with the names of the bridesmaids so we saw that happening in maria's wedding the money dance again the pinning of the money on the bride and groom we saw that um at maria's wedding as well and the tossing of rice so where <laughs> everywhere else they, they they toss confetti you know rose petals or whatever it's tradition in cyprus to toss rice it symbolizes good fortune fertility and you know all those good things okay all that said and done let's have a wee drink cheers to the couple maria and dean um also in the storisma we have the incense as well as the zonisma we have the dancing of the clothes or part of the clothes in a basket so okay. in this video i'm going to concentrate on the storisma the dressing of the bride but before I get on to that, I want to share with you what my mum used to tell me about weddings in Cyprus, in the village. Because it was really, really quite interesting. So this is how my mum used to describe weddings. So basically, a wedding in the village would last for three days. And the whole village would be invited. The whole village took part in this wedding the first day would be what was called the bubloma, the bubloma, or the dance of the bubloma, the mattress dance, and where family and friends would prepare the matrimonial mattress or bubloma. Each corner of the mattress would be decorated with red ribbon in the form of a cross 
to symbolize the bride's virginity it was all about virginity people it's all about virginity it gets worse so basically they would grab the corners of the mattress hold it above their heads and dance and all of that and people would throw money in again another way of kind of helping the couple and basically that's what they would do and also they would get a, a local baby the newest of local you know babies in the village and roll it on the mattress and this was again for fertility and for the couple to have a baby and all of that i remember when i went to the, to cyprus and i'd just had costa costa was i don't know months old when we went maybe it was four months five months at the very most and my cousin who was gonna get married got a hold of costa and just can i can i just roll him on our mattress and i was like i, I was like well yeah okay carry on because because costa was this blonde blue-eyed baby you know and the, you know and this is what they were aiming for i think <laughs> so they took my son and them rolling him on the mattress and she had a son <laughs> so that was the first day and again it's it's a very party like atmosphere the second day would be the actual wedding and how that started would be with the stolizma which was another party in itself and this is what the tradition we held on to when maria got married the third day was the andigamo so again it would be a very party atmosphere and all going well they would all be celebrating so my mom used to tell me that what would happen on the morning of the third day so the day after the the <laughs> wedding this is what my mom used to tell me okay we're going back many a year now they would actually show like the the mother-in-law would go in take the sheets off the bed and show them to the village basically showing the bride's virginity to the whole of the village okay i don't know this is what my mum used to tell me people and you know that would be another celebration of course if the bride wasn't a virgin my mum used to say to me there was always a way around it you know there was always blood they could get a hold of you know celebration you know the slaughtering of animals to barbecue and all all of that there was always blood about that they could stain the sheets with okay enough said right okay that's the very 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 old traditions and that's what my mum used to tell me that's just the stories my mum used to share with me of how weddings used to be in the villages back in the day right let's get on to the stolizma and like i said these are the traditions that you will have seen on my video of maria and dane's wedding so basically this is just stolizma means dressing of the bride or the groom that's all it means so like you have seen maria's bridesmaids placing her jewelry on her her shoes on her so it's the dressing of the bride and then you will have seen Rico and like the close relatives it's mainly the mum the dad the godmother godfather the, and siblings you know maid of honor and best man these are the the main people that take part in the dressing of the bride or groom so what happens is parts of the the clothing so we had maria's um veil in a basket and it's so it's placed in a basket and you just each person dances with the basket over maria's head and this just symbolizes luck and fortune this is just for luck and fortune and that's why it's done and it's all done to music which have you know the right words and it's really it really is an emotional time because when you're listening to the vocals and the music and the meaning behind the words it's oh it's really it gets really quite emotional and that's a big part of it you would have seen and uh, there was musicians there that and it's the words that they're singing that you know they mean a lot of everything that's going on there's certain words where it's saying that 
you're leaving your mother now and making a new start. It's like, oh, it's really, it's really quite an emotional time. So that was what the dancing of the basket was. So one of the most important parts or one of the most important traditions is the zonisman, the tying of the sash. Right here, you, will see, you saw my one in there. This is the one I used for my boys, both for George and Costa. This is the one, people. And hopefully I can use it for Luke as well. So this was our red sash that we used. So everything that's done, but I didn't say everything that's done in these traditions, it's done in threes. And this signifies the Holy Trinity basically and that's why everything is done in three so you circle round in three times you know you do the sash three times you do the incense three times it's always done in threes and it should really be the amount of people that do this should be in odd numbers as well so each person will act out the symbol of the cross with the zoni with the sash three times from forehead to waist to right shoulder to left shoulder and then you'll wrap it round the waist three times and tying it. The colour red is a symbol of fertility, that's how I was saying earlier on that red plays a significant part. So all the traditions basically are for good luck, for fertility, um, to ward off evil you know it's all about that that's what all these traditions really symbolize then we have the incense and I have here the one that was used for me needs a bit of a clean um, the Gabnisteri this is all pure silver so this was the one my mum used for me and that I used <laughs> makes me quite emotional and the one that I used for my boys as well so you'll see in here this is where we burn the olive battery run out on me people so in here this is where we'll burn the olive leaves with the little coals and the incense and this is what we use to bless the bride or the groom depending where you are and this holds rose water and this is normally the tradition is that you sprinkle it on so the people that are taking part in all the blessings of the couple you sprinkle it onto their hands as a cleanse with rose water before they start doing all the traditions so there we go i mean it's the detail on this is absolutely beautiful it does need clean my mum always used to say to me don't clean it too often so I clean it once a year as you can see it's due a clean but the, the detail these things are really really expensive pure silver and the engravings and everything are just beautiful so this was the one that was used on me so it was my mum's and she passed it on to me when the boys were going to get married there we go isn't it beautiful she used to have it in Cyprus and of course I brought it over. Okay, the final custom was the signing of the bride's shoes. So you will have seen um, the bridesmaids all signing their names on the bottom of Maria's shoe. So sometimes it's the brides themselves that just write their names or the bride will write her bridesmaids names. So what's supposed to happen is as Maria dances and as she enjoys the wedding wearing her shoes which Maria ended up changing out of <laughs> um, then the names underneath the shoe will start to rub away and the last name left at the bottom of the shoe signifies that that will be the next person to get married so that's where the tradition of the writing of the names of the bridesmaids under the shoes so that was the traditions and customs of the stolisman the dressing of the bride of course when it's the groom like i said you shave them and all of that and dress them and yep i shared actually some of the footage of my boys stolisma on my instagram keep telling you all to follow me on instagram because i do 
you know sometimes share more on instagram it's easier sometimes i am looking into uploading the boys weddings onto youtube i haven't worked out how it's done i'm hoping the boys will work it out for me and also my mind's on videotape does anybody know you remember what was it betamax and the big so betamax were the small ones i've got them in both and the what were the other ones called v chess v oh no what was that i don't know the big tapes were the other ones anyway I've, I, that's what i've got them and i've also managed to get my wedding on cd as well but i don't know i don't know how to upload them onto youtube but if ever i work it out i will upload them onto youtube so there's other traditions of course when you're actually in the church like i said at the beginning but um maria didn't have the traditional group separate wedding oh i forgot about the money dance of course the money dance so maria instead of everybody giving her a gift she wanted to go with the Greek separate custom of dancing and everybody pinning money onto the bride and groom. So rather than buy them something, you just pin money onto them. More often than not now in Cyprus, people just put the money in an envelope and hand it to the couple. I think for many reasons. One, it's easier to see right let's be honest here it's easier to see how much each person is giving okay so people may deny it but it, people do look at these things at how much each person is giving and you know i'm always up front so that's one reason and in cyprus a lot of people don't buy their wedding dresses they rent their wedding dresses so you know pinning because you're actually using a pen pinning money onto a rented wedding dress is not uh, a good idea but my boys certainly when they got married they did the money dance and we pinned the money on and that's what Maria, Maria decided to do as well and it is absolutely beautiful to watch it's an amazing tradition it really really is and when I got married as well it was the same I had money pinned onto me so it's they're lovely traditions and it's a shame it's a shame that as the years go on they fade away but so but maria decided to stick to a lot of them so instead of giving the couple a gift you pin your gift onto onto the couple traditionally the parents go up first then the godparents and then everybody else in order of auntie uncles cousins and that sort of thing is how it normally happens so that's our traditions i hope you have enjoyed them if you have any more questions if you feel i've missed anything out just ask me in the comments and i'll let you know i hope let me know if you've enjoyed this i really love now sharing uh traditions they they mean so much to me now whereas i've said this before on my videos you know when i was much younger i didn't appreciate them i didn't appreciate my culture and of course the older i get i absolutely love it and i love to share it and i love to see the younger generations holding on to our traditions i mean some of them thank goodness we're not kind of shaking our sheets out the window proving our virginity <laughs> you know maybe some of them it's well and good i don't think there would be <laughs> don't think there would be many sheets with uh, proving your virginity <laughs> after marriage but anyway enough said so on that note cheers thank you so much for joining me and um cheers i'll see you on the next one bye oh by the way if you'd like to see more videos from me i'm gonna link one here here and if you're not already subscribed it's a right here bye